A Lexington gas station clerk who was shot in an attempted robbery is thanking the public for support. An update on his condition just ahead on WKYT News at Noon. An arrest has been made in connection with the home invasion and the Hibbett Sports robberies. We'll tell you about the man being charged and alarming new details in the case. Good looking rest of the day. That takes you off into your weekend. No problems whatsoever. But next week, we have a big blasting cold front. I'll show you the rain that comes with it when that arrives. And also, big time chill in the air. That's coming up. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon. We be begin with breaking news this afternoon. A man has been shot by a deputy in Powell County. It happened in the Coppers Creek Road area that is just north of Clay City. State police are on their way to the scene right now. Deputies say they were chasing a car when someone jumped out and ran. That person was shot once in the chest. Deputies say he is still alive. We have very few more details at this moment. We do have a news crew arriving there very shortly. Keep it here on WKYT News for the latest information. A Lexington gas station clerk who was shot on the job is now paralyzed. Charles Moore, known by many as Chuck, was shot several times during an attempted robbery Saturday night at the Marathon gas station on Lansdowne Drive. From his hospital bed, Moore is now thanking the public. WKYT's Andrea Walker is at our live desk now with our top story at noon. Andrea? Moore's daughter-in-law also released a statement on behalf of the family this morning to WKYT. She says that although this is sad news for Charles or Chuck, as they call him, and everyone who loves him, his family is committed to moving forward with positivity. Moore released an update of his own from his hospital bed this morning. In a Facebook video, he thanks everyone for their support and continued prayers. Take a look. Everybody knows I'm a Marine, so four rounds ain't. Um, I'm uh, I appreciate really appreciate the the uh, the support, and uh, I'm doing pretty good. I don't think I'll have much problems. Uh, just send me an just send me an instant message, or uh, you know, and um, keep the cards and letters coming. They're really 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 uh, helping me out. As you can see there, Moore is facing this situation with a lot of bravery right now. His family says that although there is currently no cure for Moore's condition, they remain hopeful that rehabilitation and therapy will help Chuck be able to, quote, learn to navigate the world in a new and different way than before. Now, the family also wants to remind the community there will be a fundraiser held at the marathon where Moore worked on Lansdowne Drive. Owners and staff will be raising money there to help ease the financial burden on the family. That fundraiser will start tomorrow morning. Morning at 10 a.m. At the live desk, Andrea Walker, WKYT. Andrea, thank you. And police are still searching for three men who entered the store along with a getaway driver. Governor Matt Bevan was in Frankfurt this morning to sign a statement meant to strengthen the state's support of the Kentucky National Guard and Reserve. Now, while there, we asked him about the recent state Supreme Court's ruling saying that his cuts to the budgets of state universities and colleges were illegal. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is live now with more on the governor's response. Good afternoon. Now, we were very briefly able to speak with Governor Matt Bevan in passing less than an hour ago, and he's saying it's still too early to comment on the state Supreme Court's decision. Now, yesterday, um, Attorney, Attorney General Andy Bashir called on the governor to release $18 million from an account immediately, saying eight public colleges and universities across the state could really use that money. Those schools are already making plans for those funds in their budget. University of Kentucky said it will put the five million toward student success, specifically retention and graduation rates. According to the ruling, Governor Bevan has 20 days to release the funds. We're in the process of reading through uh, the ruling itself, and we'll respond uh, as we are given time to do. We'll do exactly that. So, thank you, guys. In a statement released yesterday by the governor's office, it said the attorney general doesn't understand the severity of the state's pension problem. Right now, there's no indication of when that money would be released. Live in Frankfurt, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you. The state Supreme Court's decision is now sent back to Franklin County Court. Well, it might just be the first clown bust in Kentucky. Middlesboro police have arrested Jonathan Martin overnight. 
They say an officer saw someone dressed as a clown walking around a wooded area in Bell County. Martin is now charged with violating the city of Middlesbrough's ordinance of covering your face while in public and with disorderly conduct. He was arrested also for outstanding warrants. It was quite the scene this morning near the Fayette Scott County line. Police and two coroner's vans were investigating after bones were found. The discovery was made at a work site off US 25 near Ironworks Road. Right now, Lexington police think that the bones belong to an animal. The coroner has yet to make his official determination. But enjoy your last few days of that summer feeling out there because major changes are coming in our forecast. And who knows, this could be the last weekend <laughs> could for it. Be. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris is live in our first alert weather center now. Micah? Yeah, this may be, like you guys were talking about, this may be that last crack, that last go at it, and maybe sitting out by the pool because we'll be roughly 90 degrees today, 90 degrees for your day tomorrow on Saturday, and off towards your Sunday. We're there in the mid to upper 80s. So this may be the last go at it if you still have your pool open or just just kind of hanging out outside, getting that heat going on. We're there in the 80s for virtually all locations, 86 being the hot spot. Right now in Franklin County, we'll finish off roughly 90 degrees. It's just a different day, but the same weather pattern. It's not changing much today, nor the weekend. And that's good news for us because we got a lot going on this weekend. However, if you're looking for fall, since we're already in it, and this is the first full day of fall, well, it comes later on next week. We're going to have to wait a week because yeah, here comes that big front. It'll bring in not only rain, but some much, much cooler conditions, maybe even cold conditions to some of us. I'll show you how low we go coming up. Thank you, Micah. A man accused in a string of Lexington robberies is headed to court this afternoon. Police say Devarius Jones was involved in a home invasion and two business robberies this month. His arrest citation gives new details about the disturbing crimes he's accused of. WKYT's Lauren Miner explains. In this arrest citation, we are learning new details about a string of robberies that happened earlier this month. Lexington police arrested Devarius Jones yesterday on Winburn Avenue. Lexington police did say he had a gun on him at the time of the arrest. In the arrest citation, it states that on September 2nd, Jones and another suspect went into a home on Lucille Road. It goes on to say that they held a family inside their bedroom at gunpoint, demanding money. Two of the victims being a mother and her two-year-old. Police say another victim was in the bathroom at the time and called his grandmother, saying men were inside the home. Officers state Jones and the other robber left the home in the family's gray Camry. Something else interesting stated in the report is that one of the victims in the home invasion found a photo of Jones on Facebook. They say the picture was of a UPS employee ID card that displayed Jones' name and social security number. The day after the robbery, police say Jones and another man robbed the Hibbett Sports on Winchester Road. The citation states that the suspects threatened to kill employees twice and stole more than $2,000 out of the registers. Almost a week later, Jones, along with another suspect, are accused of robbing the Hibbett Sports on Richmond Road. According to the report, they forced two employees to lay face down on the ground while they stole money and Nike shoes. Police are also looking for another suspect in the home invasion. Police say that suspect's name is Taji Winters. Reporting in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. And Jones is scheduled to be arraigned at district court this afternoon. A man suspected of shooting into a Lexington home is now in jail. Dexter Cooper faces several charges, including three counts of wanton endangerment. Police say he fired several shots into a home near Castlewood Park yesterday morning. Now, no one was hurt. An officer who heard those shots says he pulled C Cooper over on Carlisle Avenue and found a gun, shell casings, and drugs in the car. He'll be arraigned later this afternoon in Fayette Court. A Lexington business owner has a big mess to clean up after an overnight break-in. It happened at the Boost Mobile Store in the Park Hill Shopping Center at Manowar in Pimlico Parkway. Someone smashed their way through the front door. Police say the suspect was driving a silver Chrysler 300. A busy Lexington Road is finally back open this midday after being closed for hours. Inbound North Broadway closed about 4 o'clock this morning near West 6th Street. Police say a car slammed into a utility pole, splitting it in half. And they went on to uh, take some time to work on that. The driver did not stick around. 
inbound North Broadway reopened uh, about mid-morning today. Uh, but again, uh, for those hours during the rush hour in particular, uh, quite a mess around there. A Nobel Peace Prize winner is in Lexington today. Human rights activist Kalash Satar Yarti was a co-recipient of the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize for his work in the global campaign to end child slavery. And today he spent his morning talking to children at Maxwell Elementary. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain was there. The students of Maxwell Elementary welcomed a Nobel Peace Prize winner today. <laughs> Celebration was in honor of Kalash Santolarti's work and a way for the students of Maxwell to showcase his accomplishments. The child advocate from India won a Nobel Peace Prize in 2014 for his efforts in fighting child labor and promoting education. A couple of years ago, the students sent him artwork. Today, they were able to meet him in person. Kalash said he hopes the children remember to work hard, dream big, and be nice to others. He taught me how to be a better person, and you should be like, be nice to each other. The students here at Maxwell Elementary wanted to leave the Nobel Peace Prize winner a gift, so they left him this picture. And if you look closely, the picture also includes all of them and their teachers. The personality traits that he has, the love that he has for children, it just made this a really authentic experience. And we're just so grateful for that because we wanted to know that he is just like us and we can be like him. In Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. And today the students gave Kailash a second piece of artwork. And much like the first, it featured birds and trees. And one teacher said the artwork symbolizes getting roots and wings. Uh, she added that Kailash once told a reporter that a piece of art is one of his top three most prized possessions. Wonderful visit. Absolutely. Hey, we're glad you're here on WKYT for the news at noon. The Tulsa police officer who shot and killed an unarmed black man turned herself in overnight. But I'm more on the face the charges she now faces coming up on WKYT News at Noon, Kentucky's number one midday news. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. The Oklahoma medical examiner says the unarmed man killed by a Tulsa police officer died of a gunshot wound to the chest. The officer involved in that shooting death, 42 year old Betty Shelby, turned herself in overnight. She's been charged with first degree manslaughter in the death of Terrence Crutcher. Manuel Borges as the latest. Tulsa officer Betty Shelby turned herself into police less than a week after she shot and killed Terrence Crutcher. Each of us at the end of our days will have to account for our own actions. Shelby is accused of unlawfully and unnecessarily shooting Crutcher following his refusal to comply with her lawful orders. Prosecutors say the defendant's fear resulted in her unreasonable actions. Crutcher's twin sister is grateful for the decision but says it's not enough. We know the history of these cases. We know she's been charged but then we get no convictions. We're demanding full prosecution. Shelby was responding to a call when she encountered Crutcher's abandoned vehicle. Video from a police helicopter shows Crutcher walking toward his SUV, hands in the air. This guy's still walking. According to an affidavit filed Thursday, Crutcher was not responding to any of Officer Shelby's commands to stop and reached in the driver's side front window. But lawyers for Crutcher's family say images show that window was up. The prosecutor bought the case that he felt that he could get a conviction on, and so we're going to hold him to that standard. Shelby faces a minimum of four years in prison if convicted. The funeral for Terrence Crutcher is scheduled for tomorrow. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Tulsa. Officer Shelby was immediately released after posting $50,000 bond. Protesters in Charlotte are keeping up calls for justice and demanding to see video of the fatal police shooting of Keith Scott. Demonstrators clashed with police for a third evening in a row yesterday, shortly before a mandatory midnight curfew took effect. Scott's relatives privately viewed footage of his killing Thursday. Their attorney says he couldn't tell whether Scott was holding a weapon, as police claim. 
The Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. is opening its 19th museum this weekend. The much-anticipated National Museum of African American History and Culture celebrates the art, life, and history of some of the most influential black leaders. It will open to the public tomorrow. Well, in the wake of incidents involving guns and college campuses, EKU is holding a campus safety summit this afternoon. And we'll have more on that on WKYT News at 1230. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Bright blue skies, warm conditions, the same story as I've been talking about the past four to five days. And it's not changing today, and it's definitely not changing off towards your week. And that front rolls through next week, but this is a good look everywhere across the region. Nice flow there on the highways and byways. We haven't heard of any issues whatsoever. Huge dome of higher pressure. This is keeping control. It's a dome, okay? Think about a dome. Nothing goes in, nothing comes out, and it's just blocking everything from rolling on in. And that system up toward the north of us causing flash flood warnings and also some severe thunderstorm warnings and they've been getting rounds and rounds and rounds of that because it can't move anywhere. This higher pressure is just pushing it northbound and because it's keeping us dry we're 10 to 15 degrees above average, average being in the mid 70s. Put that together, yeah, you're talking roughly 90 degrees toward this afternoon. Apple Festival kicked off yesterday, still today right around 90 degrees and that goes for Saturday. This is in Liberty and Casey County. Beautiful conditions down south. Later on this afternoon, off into the evening hours, great weather for any festivals. I know it doesn't extend off into Sunday, but if you do have any festivals going off into Sunday, you'll have no issues whatsoever. Friday night football looks good tonight. Like I said, the weekend, all everything is good to go. Off towards your week next week, upper 60s, lower 70s, with a blasting cold front rolling through. Your fall weather's next week. Your summer weather is still here, but fall weather is next week, guys, with overnight lows, possibly there in the 40s. Some pretty chilly air. Heading our direction. Change. Yeah, big yeah. change. Big change right. next week. But a good evening of, uh, the, tonight, this evening for anyone that's celebrating a birthday. That's right. We know. Or for all, yeah. all kinds yeah. of things <laughs> out there. Happy that's birthday, right. Barb. <laughs> and, and our director, Jeff Ford. Jeff Ford. Who's, uh, and the boss. Directing right yeah. I'm not yeah, talking yeah. about our boss Bruce here Things, at KYT. I'm talking about Bruce right. Springsteen. We all have our birthday. <laughs> See, Thanks, she's, guys. she's deflecting attention, and <laughs> I don't blame her. That's <laughs> great weather for it all. Uh, coming next, an, em <laughs> an emotional night for Wildcat football. We're going to take you back there. And a huge home game for Mark Stoops. Dave Baker has sports next. And checking stocks as we head into afternoon trading. They're down here at midday. With what's happened the last few weeks, you wouldn't think the Cats would need any extra motivation as they get ready for South Carolina. Maybe that's why Mark Stoops was so frosted Tuesday afternoon. In the three games since, the Kentucky defense has given up almost 1,600 yards, better than 500 yards per game. And after a bad Tuesday, the head coach, he had had enough. Yeah, we got, got after him a little bit. I'm not pleased. I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, it's frustrating. And, uh, you, you try to teach, you try to coach, you try to educate, and uh, sometimes all that don't work. You know, so, we, you know, the truth is the truth. If we're so fragile we can't handle the truth, then we're not going to win very many games. But I, I told him the truth today. Discouraging because I thought we had a really good practice yesterday. So we just, we're immature. I don't know why we just can't lock in and go to work every day. We just can't take it serious every day, and that's disappointing. I'm not satisfied. Coach Stu's not satisfied. Coach is not satisfied. We just we can't slip up and not be dominant out here. We got to be dominant every play. So if he's not happy, we're not happy. That, my friends, the way this season has gone, are not the kind of comments you want to hear three games in. South Carolina next up at Commonwealth Stadium, 7:30 kickoff in the SEC Network tomorrow night and tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel. Jen Smith of the Lexington Herald Leader previews the Cats and the Gamecocks and Tom Leach on tonight's UK Sports Hall of Fame inductions. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. Of course, all the scores and highlights tonight on Friday Night Lights. Guys, it's lining up to be a busy weekend. That's a look at sports on your Friday. Okay, always busy on Friday nights and uh, in our sports department and, then, of course, Saturday with the game. Thank oh, you. You bet. There's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. A Nobel Peace Prize winner was in Lexington today talking to elementary students. We'll update you on that. Plus... Coming up, Eastern Kentucky University holds a campus safety summit to promote safety for all campuses in Kentucky. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $20 million, and tomorrow night's Powerball jackpot is $50 million. 